بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فرسٹ آف آل اٹ از این آنر ٹو بی امنگ سچ ڈسٹنگوشڈ اسپیکرس اینڈ ایڈریسنگ سچ این آگسٹ اینڈ ونڈرفل گیدرنگ I would like to first of all honor the memory of Asma Jahangir. I would like to acknowledge that she has been a mentor and inspiration for me to join the political world. I was a lawyer till she instigated me that if you want to make a change, if you want to do anything that is right, If you believe that you want to say something beyond the drawing room talk, then join politics. And that's how my journey started. A number of, a number of things I owe to her, so my gratitude. And I'm very happy that her family, her two daughters, and all her colleagues who were working with her is taking this forward. I once went to this small country, it's called Bhutan. It's a small country somewhere in the hills. And even the landing of the plane is very difficult because the plane has to reach a certain altitude, then do a very, very dangerous turn and land in the very small airstrip. It's a small country in Himalayas called Bhutan. I happened to go there for a conference They have a king, but they also have a parliament. So the parliamentarians took me to their school. And to one of their school, I saw a number of children studying there. I thought like class fourth or fifth, ke honge, ya maybe more. But they looked very young to me. And they were studying something. So when I saw their book, when I saw their book, I thought that پورا سبجیکٹ تھا واز اباؤٹ سول لبرٹیز اور چیپٹر ون چیپٹر ون جو اس کا تھا واز اباؤٹ دا رائٹس آف ٹریز دے ہیڈ فنڈامنٹل رائٹس آف ٹریز چیپٹر ٹو واز اباؤٹ اینیملس رائٹس آف اینیملس اینڈ چیپٹر تھری ور دا رائٹس آف دا ہیومن بینگس So I, that got me wondering that we in Pakistan, we don't study civil liberties. It was not until I went to do my law degree that I studied Aristotle or Plato or Socrates ke bare mein padha, their right to ask questions. And then I got inspired by one, one philosopher, Voltaire. A French philosopher tha. and I got inspired by one of his quotes I was studying law to make money but that 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 quote actually inspired me and got me thinking and he stated to have said ek, about somebody who he did not like or uski kitab ko bada censor kiya ja raha tha. so he said you know I I hate what you say. I hate what you say, but I will die protecting your right to say it. I thought that he was a very poor man, Voltaire, that he hates what he's saying, but he'll protect, he'll die protecting that right. What is this concept of civil liberties? And I said, why have I not studied this concept when I was growing up? And then I realized that we, this concept of civil liberties should be actually in the blood of each one of us Pakistanis. Because we got this nation, we, we got this country, we got our independence based on the concept of civil liberties. Kaide Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the moment we had achieved independence, what did he say? He said, you are free to go to your temples. It's a famous quote. Hai. I'm sure everybody knows it. You are free to go to your temples. You are free to go to your mosques. 
you are free to practice whatever your religion is. The state has nothing to do with your religion. Ye tha concept hamara. We, in fact, I must give credit to our politicians. Politicians ko hum bahut zyada hamesha nicha samajhte hain. But I must give credit to them, those politicians who were the founding members of our 1973 constitution. They had the universal declaration of human rights with them. Universal declaration of human rights in Kepasthi, and then they made the constitution even better. The beautiful words, the fundamental rights in our constitution, the right of equality, the right to profess your religion, the price that there, the, 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 the fundamental right that there will be no discrimination, the basic right of life the right of due process, all these great and beautiful words, you will not find them in any constitution. So we gave, the politicians gave that constitution to the people of Pakistan. Now, where do we stand? We have the words of the law, we have the constitution, we have the ethos, but do we find those civil liberties available to us? Aaj ka topic is liye mein, I feel it is very, very interesting. What is the role of the politicians and the political forces in implementing what is already there in the law? Hame kanun ki zurut nahi hai. Hame implementation ki zurut hai. Usme mara kya role ho sakta hai? I think the fundamental role, the basic role of politicians is get a soul first. Get a soul in your body to actually feel for the people. Hame, what are we suffering from? We are suffering from two, and I said that in a speech very recently in the Senate. The chairman was uh, of, the, of the Senate was in fact addressing, uh, was, was there at the, in, the, in, the address, in the session. And I said, there are two hurdles that are stopping our civil liberties from being implemented. The hurdle, just ko lanat kehta of extremism and intolerance. And these two hurdles that are stopping our progress, while the rest of the world is in busy in, in making inventions, these two hurdles are stopping us. So as a politician, I feel our first and primary responsibility is to tackle these two issues through education and through development. I always quote, and I will re-quote the the conversation that Mulana Rumi had with one of his disciples. So the, and I've quoted this also in my speech recently, but it is worth quoting here also. So the disciple asked Mulana Rumi, which music sound, which music sound is haram in Islam? Which music sound is haram in Islam? And Mulana Rumi replied, the sound of spoons, the sound of spoons when they are heard by the poor and the hungry. <laughs> Civil liberties is something that cannot be achieved in its true form unless and until we get rid of poverty, we have development in the country, and these liberties follow that. The more the country develops, it's a historical fact, the civil liberties, the people will safeguard. 
the people themselves will safeguard those liberties. So our responsibility as politicians, first of all, is to ensure that the country develops and secondly, that we are educating people. Now, why have politicians so far failed to achieve this? That is important to learn. We have failed because if you look at our history, if you look at the history of the country, right from 1947, the politicians have been unable to live up to those expectations. They have been unable to fulfill their obligations. Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the moment 1947 came, Pakistan did not have a constitution. So he constituted a constituent assembly. And the constituent assembly thi, the constituent assembly was supposed to make a constitution. It did not make a constitution for 10 years. Why did the constitution make Because in effect, for those 10 years, they wanted to prolong their life. If they had made a constitution, then they would have been no longer part of the constituent assembly. They would not have enjoyed the privileges of being members of the assembly. So they kept prolonging it. Then when they made the 1956 constitution, this constituent assembly did not, a new constituent assembly came, they made the 56 constitution, immediately infighting started between the politicians. Prime Minister upon Prime Minister came and they changed. And what happened then? Martial law came in. Fast forwarding it to 1977, we had a democratic government, politicians were there, but elections were rigged. Infighting took place, there were movements in the streets, martial law came in. And what happened then? The very people who were fighting for democracy joined the new government of Ziaul Haq. So the reputation of the politicians kept deteriorating over time. Then came an era of two political parties, very important political parties of Pakistan, People's Party and Nawaz Sharif League. And for many years, they fought each other. Their interests was power. They fought each other, and none of them completed their five-year terms. One came in, the second one left. The second one came in, the third one left. And so, again, another martial law came at the end of the day. So the politicians kept losing their reputation in the public. And this important thing about civil liberties, it kept giving way to other institutions to suppress them. Today also, today also, I was asked to answer a very important question. Today also, we politicians are fighting each other. We are constantly at loggerheads. And I think that gives the right to other institutions to step in. Or not the right, that's not the right word. That gives them the opportunity to step in. And when they step in, then it's difficult to get the elephant out of the tent. Right now, we have very serious curtailment of our liberties. Freedom of expression and speech. Fundamental right over that. It is not there. Yes, it is not there. It is one-sided. Some people are allowed to speak and their speeches are reported. Some people's speeches are not. Number two, justice. Rule of law means everybody is to be treated equally. But we have one-sided justice going on. Many of the political leadership of one political party is being victimized, while the others are not. I can go on and on about the civil liberties that are not there. Magar, the point is, why shouldn't we think openly? Why shouldn't politicians think that if today I am in power and somebody else is suffering, tomorrow that person may be in power and I will be suffering? 
until and unless we come to realize that and we accept the fact that we actually have one agenda. If we talk about civil liberties, the agenda of every political party is common. Hai. Every political party, I believe, believes in these fundamental rights. But it happens you become in power, and once you come in power, you forget about the fundamental rights of others. And therefore, the cycle is repeated, and it gets get, get, get getting repeated. So my answer to your question that you asked is yes. Let us first look at the fundamentals. Let us first agree that civil liberties, human rights, political rights, social rights, cultural rights, all these rights are equal for everyone. Let us get the soul of these rights in our, in our, in our hearts and then we will talk. Then why should we not talk? But let us first get the premise straight. Thank you very much.